Hi, I'm Anna Runkle, also known as the Crappy Childhood Fairy. Now, all over my YouTube channel, all over my blog, I'm always talking about my daily practice. And these are the two techniques that I've been doing for 25 years that have helped to treat my symptoms of childhood PTSD and have helped me learn to go from dysregulation to re-regulation. And I'm telling you, when your brain is re-regulated, the world is your oyster. So many things become possible. So for everyone out there who relates to the problem of dysregulation, uh, I not only want to teach you how to do it, but I want to give you a little background on how I developed this. The daily practice not only helps you build re-regulation, but it helps you feel better emotionally. It gives you some calm and relief, and it helps you build an ever more stable and regulated state. So here's a little background. The first thing that ever helped my daily re-regulation practice was something I learned way back in 1994 when a friend of mine who happens to be in Alcoholics Anonymous noticed that I was basically freaking out. I was in a lot of panic and pain about my life. I was severely dysregulated, but that concept wasn't really known at the time. I didn't know about it. I was in a dark place and I was desperate. So even though I'm not an alcoholic, she offered to show me her daily practice. It kept her sober. And I basically would have tried anything. And the first thing she showed me was a way of writing down the fearful and resentful thoughts in my mind. And in the 12-step world where she came from, this is called a personal inventory. Now, most people would never have heard of her very specific technique, even people in the 12-step world, but I had the good fortune to learn from her. Now back then I really didn't know what was wrong with me. I was just someone who couldn't seem to get over bad things. I tell parts of this story at the beginning of my course, Healing Childhood PTSD. My mother was dying of lung cancer. I had just said goodbye to her for the last time. A man I had dated ended our relationship. And in the middle of this, for no apparent reason, I was violently assaulted while I was walking down the street. And as a result of this trauma, though I didn't have a name for it then, I was massively dysregulated. I was crying half the time. I was having outbursts of temper. I was getting lost on the way home from the grocery store six blocks away. I was super ADHD-ish, and I was too unfocused to even read a, a short paragraph. And I mean, my childhood PTSD was boiling up to the surface like a volcano, but not even the professionals knew what that was then. They knew I had a concussion, but they didn't quite know what this was. So the doctor couldn't help me. My therapist really tried, but I was just melting down in her office three times a week. And secretly, I was looking at a fork in the road of either I die or I go in for hospitalization. But I did not see a way to actually feel better. And then, thank God, my AA friend came along and she saw what was happening and suggested that I do what she was doing. And I didn't have an issue with alcohol, but I had an issue with sanity and survival. So I was like, yes, please show me. And even that very first time when she showed me, it was like breathing oxygen for the first time. Every time I wrote, it took the edge off. And as I kept doing it, I started to feel pretty good, actually. I started making new friends and doing better at work, and I started running, and I even started going to 12-step programs that are just for people who grew up with alcoholism in the family, which was awesome, and I still go sometimes. And that's something I wanna say. 12-step programs are really great, and I recommend them to anyone who thinks that they should maybe check them out. Just check it out. So the daily practice I was doing was going really well, and I kept going, first a year, then five years, then 10 years, and it was only after 12 years that I tried an experiment to see if I still really needed it. Because to be honest, I wasn't that happy anymore. I wasn't dysregulated all the time, but I was still in a lot of self-defeating behavior. I was choosing bad relationships. I was having a lot of health problems. My first marriage had blown up, and now I was a single mom struggling with my boss and money and my neighbors and feeling lonely. So I thought, screw it, this never worked. And I just quit my whole daily practice. And what happened when I stopped is that I dropped slowly. I didn't realize anything was wrong at first. I dropped slowly, but really severely back into dysregulation. And all the old struggles of poor focus and depression and anxiety and bad judgment and even more insane relationships, including one short one with a guy who killed himself. And these medical problems I was having and the shame and isolation that go with that. And honestly, it just about broke me. 
but in a way I treasure it because things got bad enough that I tried again to get help. And this time I found out I have PTSD. And suddenly the jagged, crazy pieces of the puzzle came together. I could see why a lot of stuff like therapy had never worked and why my daily practice had worked for me because it was treating my PTSD, my dysregulation. I would have never known that if I hadn't stopped. So I got back into it again, only this time I adapted it for my PTSD and used the parts that actually re-regulated me. And then I added a few things that helped me structure my life and I worked step by step to stay regulated, stay on track and reach goals I never thought were possible for me. And that's been the magic formula that's allowed me to grow into the happy life of love and usefulness that I get to have today. And I've shared this now with hundreds of friends and now thousands of strangers through my blog and YouTube channel and just people miscellaneous who hear that I have a technique that can help them and they call me from all over the world. So what I'm showing you is my own program adapted from pieces I learned from now several mentors and friends and from my own reading and research on what works and what doesn't work for healing childhood PTSD. It doesn't cover everything out there and if I had to give you scientific evidence for all of it, I couldn't do that. It's based on my experience and the miracles that have happened for me and that I've witnessed firsthand in others, the daily practice has helped me to get my brain back and get my emotions back and prepared me to make the big changes in my principles and actions so that I could move out of that life full of problems and grow into this one, full of love and safety and growth. And I've had a couple of medical miracles happen as a result of this daily practice too. And those are stories I'm still saving for a future boot camp or course. But I want to say whether or not you believe in miracles or God or the power outside of ourselves that can help us, the power of this daily practice doesn't change. I think like a lot of things really, healing and miracles take place on multiple levels. They can be psychological. They can also be at the same time physical, spiritual, and scientific. And that's what this technique is. I don't want to overthink it or over explain it because your own experience of it is really the only thing that matters here. For myself, I've sometimes been a science only kind of person. And at other times I have been guided by a strong faith and this daily practice has carried me and worked for me through all of it. It's for everyone. If you're someone who believes in God and prays, this is for you. And if you're an atheist or a Buddhist or nature is your church, or you're a recovering alcoholic or wherever you are on the spectrum of belief, what I'm going to show you is compatible and it's for you. The power of the daily practice doesn't depend on what you believe. It just depends on whether or not you do it.